This episode was sponsored by Skillshare. Every character in the game has its weaknesses. For example, crocodiles, which possess the strongest bite attack in the game currently, get completely shut down by a single grab. Cheetahs, the fastest land build in the game, get griefed to no end at low levels because even at their peak strength, they're too weak to defend themselves and their party from attacks from the other players in their region. Seals have high speed in the water, but, I mean, look at this. What is this? There are two main ways you can circumvent your character's weaknesses. The first would be to reallocate some of your stats to create a more well-rounded character. One example of this would be the sea lion, which is a more well-rounded version of the seal. While they aren't quite as good as swimmers as seals are, they do have great water mobility and can also hold their own on land. The second option, and in my opinion, the better option, would be to team up with another player whose character complements yours so that you can cover each other's weaknesses without sacrificing the most impressive aspects of your build. So today I'd like to highlight the top 5 animal team combos, starting off with number 5. Mammals are uniquely susceptible to parasites like biting flies and ticks. Since many of them don't have long grasping arms or opposable thumbs, they don't really have any way to remove a parasite that's biting them. This is where the oxpecker comes in. Oxpeckers can cleanse any mammal of their parasite debuffs, an indispensably important perk to have. The oxpecker gets a free source of XP and also gets protection by sticking with a party of players in a much higher weight class. This potential team combo is one of the biggest benefits of playing an herbivore class as opposed to an omnivore or carnivore, because oxpecker players avoid those builds. Next we've got the coyote and the badger. Both of these builds are solid mid to high tiers on their own, and they don't have too much of a problem securing eliminations without help. However, against other team strategies such as prairie dogs, they do run into some issues. Coyotes can outspeed prairie dogs on the ground, but they can't do anything to prevent them from simply hiding in their burrows. Badgers, conversely, can easily dig up burrows, but aren't nearly as mobile as coyotes. So to cover all the prairie dogs' options, coyotes and badgers will team up and hunt cooperatively. Prairie dogs that flee their burrow will get caught by the coyote, and players running from the coyote back to their burrow will be caught by the badger. This is a similar technique used by the grouper in the marine server. Groupers are some of the strongest fish builds in the game. While not quite as powerful as the shark or as fast as the swordfish, they're a great jack-of-all-trades style build with few bad matchups. However, similar to the coyote, they don't have any good options against a target hiding in the crevices of a reef. That's where the moray eel comes in. Similar to the badger on land, eels don't have a particularly high mobility stat, but they can weave in and out of tight spaces without issue. And so a grouper and an eel will team up to trap targets, just like the coyote-badger combo. Fish fleeing the eel player will get caught by the grouper, and the looming presence of the grouper will intimidate other fish players into trying to take cover in the reef, where the eel is positioned to strike. But as powerful as this combo is, the reef is home to an even more unstoppable combo. Anemones are unique in that they opt for a sedentary playstyle, completely sacrificing their mobility stat, and trading those points in for other abilities. Some do retain their ability to move, but these options aren't particularly fast and leave them highly vulnerable while doing so. Anyways, sea anemones have the death touch ability, similar to jellyfish, but because they have such bad movement options, they don't have many choices when it comes to catching their prey or escaping an attack. This is where they benefit immensely from teaming up with clownfish. So clownfish are pretty much perfectly spec to cover the anemone's bad matchups. They have immunity to the death touch ability, so they aren't insta-killed by the anemone. They also have one of the lowest stealth ratings of any fish, which would normally be a huge weakness, but used in conjunction with the sea anemone's powerful trapping potential, it actually ends up being a powerful offensive tool. The clownfish can essentially serve as bait, luring in other players who then get caught by the anemone. In addition, clownfish are actually skilled rushdown fighters that can easily chase off builds that pose a threat to the anemone. In some cases, chasing off players far beyond the clownfish's weight class. But if the clownfish does encounter a player that they can't fight head-on, they can safely retreat to the protection of the anemone. It's pretty common knowledge that frogs are some of the least viable builds in the game. With their extremely low power, defense, and HP, coupled with having one of the most vulnerable starts and their reliance on moisture, and it's not hard to see why the amphibian player base is on the verge of collapse. But they do have a few upsides, most notably their fast tether grab, as well as one of the highest jumps in the game. The tether grab specifically is why it makes such an effective teammate to the tarantula. Spiders in general are extremely effective against flying builds like moths, dragonflies, and wasps. However, because tarantulas didn't put any skill points into web building, instead using those points to increase their base stats, they don't have as good a matchup against flyers and actually end up getting bodied pretty hard by them. This is where the frog comes in. 
Most Tarantula players usually treat frogs as pretty easy targets, as their fangs can usually defeat them in one hit. But experienced Tarantula mains will actually party up with them as their tether grab is super effective against flying types, perfectly covering the Tarantula's weakness. Meanwhile, the Tarantula will protect the frog from pretty much any ground-based threat. It's an awesome team combo, one of my personal favorites. More Tarantula and Frog players need to adopt this strategy. Teamwork is one of the most effective ways in the entire game to win encounters, but working with others presents its own set of challenges. For example, if a clownfish fails to use the brush emote frequently enough, it will lose its immunity to the anemone's sting. Communication is the most important factor in teamwork, and understanding what makes communication effective is something that comes with experience, but you can also learn about it by taking communication classes on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn tons of valuable new skills to level up your game. It's one of my favorite resources, and several of my favorite YouTubers have made classes on there as well. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will get two months of Skillshare for free. Thanks for watching, and Happy New Year! I've got a ton of fun stuff planned for 2019, so be sure to subscribe! Lastly, thank you to my patrons on Patreon, and until next time, good luck out there!